Yeah, I like that. What is it when we beat Swindon? What does it say? We beat Swindon 4-0. <laughs> 4-0, yes. exactly right. Exactly that, that's right. the video. Um, so, <laughs> firstly, uh, welcome to the podcast, uh, episode nine of Seagull Social. Um, I am your host, Maz, uh, and of course, I'm always joined by Ben and Ryan. How are we doing, chaps? All good. All good, Maz. Yourself? Yeah, not bad. I think you're not bad. And of no. course, we are joined by the legend um, that is Casper <laughs> Uh Welcome, Casper. How are you doing? Thank you very much. I'm all right. You're right, fellas. Yeah, yeah all good. Much. M- much, much better with you on the pod. Uh, it makes yeah. it makes it mu- much better when we have a guest on. So uh, um, it's really, really fun for us. So um, let's, yeah, first of let's all- talk about accessories quickly. So I've had to wear a hat today <laughs> because my boss said without a hat I look like Khabib Nurmagomedov, the uh, UFC fighter. So I'm having to wear a hat. And if you're watching on YouTube. Casper's kindly wearing his uh, headphones that he plays Call of Duty with just <laughs> yeah, just yeah. for the podcast. So thank you, Casper, again for I, that. I had to, yeah, I look even worse than you, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's just that. to get a good sound. Yeah, thank you very much. I do appreciate <laughs> it. No, we, we do appreciate it. Um, and are you any good at um, Call of Duty, Casper? Are you, are you any good? No, well, not really. I used to play a lot, especially when um, when Peter Bresson was here. Um, we were We were... Like we used to play constantly, we ended up buying a, t- a TV that we could bring on the bus <laughs> when we when we went on away games. So we were playing That's Call amazing. of Duty nonstop, and we had it because some of the TVs in the hotel they they didn't have HDMI and all that. So we just made sure we had our own TV so we could play uh, play constantly. So we That's used to incredible. we used to be yeah, I used to be all right at it. Now I'm just terrible. I haven't played for a long time, but I'm just getting getting back into it. Which was your who, who, favorite Call of Duty then? I can't remember what it's called, but it was uh, it was one where one of the maps were. So let let's say I I, I came to the club in two thousand ten. So it, it probably the one that uh, was released in in November two thousand and ten, and the was one that in Modern Warfare two was that the like the small I think so, yeah. Rust. Um, yeah, Rust was one of them. That's right, yeah. one of the maps. Yeah, brilliant. Cool. And Jungle, yeah. there was one uh, where the map was called Jungle. Yeah, um, I think so. I think one so. was called Grit. Maybe that was a little bit later, but uh, I played it for two or three <laughs> times, two or two years in a row. And, <laughs> Amazing. But uh, I got off it when uh, when suddenly you could fly and all that. That, that was not yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Same here, mate. You, you, had to start, you had to start training, Casper. <laughs> you had to go back to training. I know. <laughs> the boss kept going. Yeah. <laughs> 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 there were times where we ended up playing to like two or three hundred o'clock in the morning, and then Peter sometimes was staying with me uh, when when our misses were so, so his misses went back to uh, Czech Republic, and mine went back to Denmark. So we had two TVs in the living room, two Playstations. We've had each of our TV next to each other, and was linking them up. It was it was brilliant. It was that's best time. That's, that's incredible. And and finally on the COD because this isn't a COD podcast. If anyone was tuning in, oh. uh, just just, just, fi- just finally, who's the, who's the better player, you or Peter? Uh, it's definitely Peter at the moment. I've just been playing with him uh, oh, uh, the other day, oh, and no. actually this, today as well. He's definitely better than me at the moment. Ah oh, well, well. Hopefully, with lockdown, well, lockdown, you're gonna have a lot of time to play. So you can, so, uh, you can. How is out. how is Peter doing, Casper? Because I'm sure the, the Brighton fans will want to hear. Uh, no, he's doing well. He's he's good. He's uh, doing graphic design now. He's living in in Czech oh, wow. Repu- in Czech Republic. Yeah, he's always been very arty. You know, he could uh, he plays music and uh, he always did these amazing videos online. Uh, he, I think he put some of them on YouTube where it took him days where he would move the sofa. You, I don't know whether this explains it to people, but imagine if you move the sofa a tiny bit, take a photo, a tiny bit again, take a photo, uh, and like then at do the end, Lego. stop, uh, stop yeah, motion, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then at the, at the end, you got a video of uh, he did one where the living room disappeared and everything was dragged <laughs> out of the door. It's, it's mad. That's it. Um, That's mad. But he's <laughs> that good. Not what he's I was expecting good. you'd say about Brezza. Yeah. 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 No, he's, That's cool though. He's very hard. He plays music and loves to sing and. That's uh, incredible. Multi-talented. 
Yeah, that's amazing. Well, well, that sort of takes us on really nicely, actually, to sort of one of our first questions for you. Um, so um, I, I don't know if people have listened to sort of podcasts with you before, but uh, we, we listened to one of your podcasts that you, you had an interview with. And you mentioned that if football didn't work out for you, um, you would have joined the Danish police force. Now, um, is, is it like, yeah, could just run us through. What, 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 how did that come about? And why, why was that sort of like a choice? I don't know. It was just, uh, well, obviously, when you're a kid, you you got your things that you want to do. I'm sure some of you would would have dreams or hopes or, of of the yeah. future when when you were younger. Uh, Many failed dreams, Casper. Many failed dreams of, fo- of football being a footballer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I was I was <laughs> lucky to be able to to live uh, live off my hobby or or go the f- the football route. Um, but if I if I hadn't been a footballer, yeah, I would have gone. Uh, it would have been either the army or it would have been in in the police. Uh, wow. That that would have been I, me. Oh, and what was it about like being a policeman? Well, what what did that, what attracted you to, you know, being a policeman if it wasn't football? I don't know, honestly, I, I couldn't <laughs> tell you. But it's just, uh, you know, I'm not good at just sitting down doing office stuff for for too long at a time. I I, I always wanted to go out be something a little bit physical uh, uh, and and that was just what I wanted to do so I always thought that uh, I knew that you had to be it had to be before 20 28 I think the rule was you had to apply for the police so I knew I had until okay. 28 to figure out whether the football was working or not uh, and luckily, uh, I didn't have to go down that that route. To be fair, yeah, fair, yeah. fair play. Uh, and then final, final thing on on this: um, out of the Brighton players, past or present, who do you think would have made the best police officer? Oh, oh apart from yourself, obviously. Yeah, no, <laughs> uh, that would have been like an I could see like a Adam Milap or something like that. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. because nobody well, would what, be what missing about with Kuypers? him. Michelle yeah, Kuypers, no, he, true. I never played been... with him though. Um, but no, he, yeah, Adam, he would have been one where you, you wouldn't be messing with him, would you? <laughs> no. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, just put straight <laughs> up, straight up. And uh, sticking on the topics of jobs, was it true that you used to work in a pizzeria as well? Yeah, so when I, um, obviously uh, in Denmark, I wasn't full-time until I was about 20. So I uh, I had jobs. I, was, I used to work in an after-school club. Uh, I used to work in a pizzeria. Well, I, I didn't didn't make the pizzas, I have to say, but I did. I was like, going to say, did the goalkeeping coach not tell you like a better hand eye coordination? <laughs> no. you making the pizzas. The pizza. yeah. No, no, I, I just I delivered pizzas as well on my on my scooter. Um, the pizzas would have been so cold when I delivered. Like it's freezing <laughs> in Denmark, and at the time That's you didn't have any any of the heat boxes or anything like that, so the pizzas would just have been frozen. Oh, nightmare! Yeah. Unbelievable. Wait, so uh, on, on that subject of jobs, then, Casper, how did you get into being like a goalkeeper? Was it always football, or was um, you know were you always thinking to be a footballer and a goalkeeper at that? Yeah, no, that was obviously my dream. But when I was young, I used to play outfield. So uh, I played in defence, I played midfield. Um, then uh, by chance, I got stuck in goal, probably because of my size a little bit. Um, and that worked out all right. Then, uh, <laughs> then the club not too far down the road uh, from where I used to live uh, called Ku. That's that's a difficult one for you guys. But they were in, this, in like the championship in Denmark. Um, they... Uh, they wanted to, to at the time you wouldn't call it signing because I was I was that young and you you wouldn't get a contract or anything like that. But they wanted to to get me to come and play for them, so I did that. And uh, then later on, I got a contract earning at, like we're talking nothing, but it was just mm. really cool to be able to say that that you were contracted, mm. that you had a contract, and you were getting paid to play football. Um, and then later on, yeah, then I got my debut for the first team when I was quite young. Uh, Got sent off in the second game uh, <laughs> for the club. What? How'd you get sent off? What? Yeah, what for? It's it's not one of my proudest moments, but um, <laughs> so obviously I'm I'm quite young and you know wanted to show what I can do and and all this and that. Uh, it did quite well in my debut, uh, but the second game we were playing away to a, a, a club in Copenhagen, and early on in the game, a guy he slides into me like stuts first and hits me straight in the chest. And with, without thinking, so you're, you're I, thinking I'm not having this. Yeah, exactly. So I tried. I went for him, and and obviously, uh, yeah, straight. Away. And then obviously, well, do you, you punch him or just attack it? Or you I didn't him? hit him, but I uh, the the 
Yeah, I, I tried. I, I must admit, I tried to, I tried <laughs> to go up onto there. the crossbar, and done like a frog splash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, I didn't do that. It wasn't that bad. But no, I did stuff I, I, I shouldn't be doing, and and that's sometimes what happens when you're when you're young. And and I learned my lesson, mm. uh, straight red, mm. and uh, that was it. Yeah, and obviously taking you to you know Brighton in League One. What was that like for you? That move. Yeah, but um, Goss Goss tried to sign me early on in in that season. Uh, sorry, in that in that window, uh, it was just at my end. I was coming to my end of my contract in Leeds. I kind of knew that I wouldn't get a new deal. Mm. Uh, so Goss tried to to get me, and uh, at the time, I thought uh, I had quite a good season with Leeds. It was the year we uh, we beat Man United and uh, played. I had some good games against Tottenham over two legs. We drew at at White Hart Lane, and um. So I thought, no, I'll just wait and see. I'm just going to wait and see what what's going to happen. Uh, mm. But the offers I had, I, I went to I went to Turkey to train with a club. I went to uh, to Greece to look at a club. Uh, and the offers that I was getting weren't probably what what I really expected. So I think Peter he broke his wrist and and Gus phoned me up again. I was in Turkey at the time. Playing too much Call of Duty, was he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could have been it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, he called me up and said, "Come on, Casper, let's let's uh, let's get this sorted now." And and happily, like I'm so happy that uh, I, I must admit, I, re- I remember lying in bed and I said to my to my partner, I said, after I turned Bryden down, I knew they signed Michael Pope as well. Uh, mm. I said, I think we made a mistake here. We should have gone to Bryden, <laughs> uh, yeah. but that was that was too late at the time. But luckily, I got another chance. And obviously, you've been at the club now for what ten years. Um, it's just been incredible yeah. to see how far the club's come. Like, how's that been for you? Obviously, playing at a university campus in the Withdee, and then all of a sudden you're playing at the Amex, <laughs> world class facilities. Like, what was that like seeing the Amex for the first time? Um, see, the thing is, I only got happy memories about the Withdee. I actually live like 200 meters from the Withdee now. Uh, oh, wow. I used to love yeah. love playing there because we had a really good season. But obviously, Amex is is a was a proper stadium, uh, and it's just. Mm-hmm gotten stronger and stronger hasn't it got to keep yeah. expanding it and you don't uh, have to worry about it collapsing on you or anything like that <laughs> yeah no no true <laughs> no it's it's a great place isn't it uh, and yeah. and to see the club go from the 15 days and from the training facilities we had up at the at the university ground is uh, it's it's crazy to think about mm. yeah no, definitely. You're like it's it's crazy to uh, you know as as yourself saying that you know going from that, that such a small stadium, it all being you know a bit up in the air. Um, obviously, we ground shared as well before your I think before your time. Yeah. So yeah, if, as as a club, we we've come a long long way, and it's it must be incredible for you to see sort of the growth of the club. Um, but j- just quickly going back to you mentioned Leeds. Um, you know your, your time at Leeds, obviously. I'm quite interested to know because uh, let's be real, let's be you know everyone, let's be honest here. Leeds are <laughs> Leeds are a bigger club uh, than us, and they, you know they got big at the time, especially when you moved. They must have had a big infrastructure, you know, massive stadium, massive fan base. What was the difference between you know go- going from Leeds um, to Brighton at that time? Was it? Did you feel like it was a bit of a step down, or you know? Um, what was your thoughts? Obviously, yeah. As, as you say, Leeds is 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 a massive club in in England uh and the fan base you know we we in league one we had about we could have we played a i think a local derby against Huddersfield. i think we had thirty thousand. so obviously crazy, it's a yeah. it's a it's a big change to go to to the Wifteen where we <laughs> there's like three 8, 000, four thousand yeah oh, maybe, no, maybe that was that, max yeah. no yeah, yeah yeah um but you know what i i came to brighton because i wanted to come so you know, there, were, there was, as I said, there was other offers, but I knew Goss. I knew what Goss wanted. I knew his plans. Uh, I really liked Goss. Um, I knew Brighton had a good squad at the time, so I thought we got a good chance of going up. Uh, Every player I've spoke to since that sort of era has just said how amazing Gus was for them as a, as a player and how much he like yeah. sort of impacted their career. It's just mad. Every single player I've spoke to has said the exact same thing. Yeah, no, it, it's the, the type of football he wanted to play. The, the type of guy he is, uh, he's he's a, he's a he's a good guy in in many ways. Uh, he's got the uh, he's got a bad temper at times when uh, when things are not going well. Um, but you know that's that's the way he is. Uh, I, I thought if even though 
the, the university ground. You get, even though I came from um, the lead training ground where that is similar, obviously not as good as what we got now, but it was a great, great facilities, but you just get on with it. Um, mm, yeah. Like there's no point moaning or complaining because it was, it was great. And the way with the players we had at Brighton at the, at the time, there was, it was brilliant. Like uh, we had in the, this is weird as well, like two separate dressing rooms where, you know, but it was good crack. Everybody got on. Uh, mm. The people there were, were good people. So you just get on with it. And it was fine. I had, we had a great season. Yeah, were you attracted no, to having to use your feet a lot more as a goalkeeper? Is that something you experienced in previous clubs you were at? Uh, yeah, back in Denmark uh, with Brunby, we it was all it was position based football, not as mad as it was with Goss, but <laughs> not as strict. <laughs> no, no, but uh, Leeds, no chance. Uh, everything was very direct. Who out to on... Jermaine Beckford? And that's, it, that's it. <laughs> yeah, we had the uh, Tressa Candall or, or Jermaine Beckford or. Um, Oh, what's the Argentinian boy we had up front as well? Oh, we uh, ended up... Becchio. Yeah, Becchio, Becchio as well. Oh, he was yeah. good, yeah. What a legend. He was, yeah, he was good. Yeah. Good player. Um, mm. I remember early on, we had Dennis Wise as manager, and um, in training, we were doing this. It was just a tactical uh, training, basically. It was 11 v 11. And I passed it to one of the... Cent- no, let me tell you before this. So before my debut, <laughs> up, the first game was Crystal Palace at home. And mm. uh, Dennis took me up in the office and said, do not give the ball to the centre-backs under any circumstances it's going long i went all right yeah no problem so anyway <laughs> played palace and all that didn't give it to the center backs yeah. training later on and uh, so this tactical 11 v 11 I, I passed the ball to one of the center backs completely on a post there's nobody even close to him and then he just blows his whistle and goes what the fuck are you doing <laughs> <laughs> 10 press-ups now no oh, really wow what, what, what's wrong what, what, what i've done he said, you pass the ball to the centre-backs. You're not allowed to do that. I went, all right, yeah. Go down to 10, 10 <sighs> percent mad. And then out of interest, who, who were the centre-backs? <laughs> out of interest. Um, mostly it was Rui Marquez uh, yeah. and Matt Heath. It was oh, okay. at the time. Maybe, Ma- maybe it was down to them rather than... It was, yeah. Maybe you weren't the problem. It was them that was the yeah, problem. Yeah, <laughs> no, they, they, were not, they were not really... Uh, and I don't think I... Uh, disrespect them by saying they were not ball playing centre backs. Maybe yeah. Yeah. Rui Marcus he he was, but I think Matt Heath he knew that he was a good he was a good defender. Like he would win everything in the air and all that, but he he wouldn't uh, bring the ball forward into midfield and uh, do a one two and uh, like it, yeah. it, that was not his game. Yeah, I think I it might that, be down that, to Dennis Wise, wasn't he at Wimbledon back in the day? And he, yeah, I think he they was, were really yeah. strict on long balls yeah. and being aggressive and not doing that to centre back. So I think that yeah, really that, paid a that was big just part. the way we played, and um, it was fine. We had a really good year, but Dennis left. Obviously, he ended up going to Newcastle as a, I don't know, sporting director or something like that. Uh, then Goss, so, yeah. Goss left. We lost him a uh, short space of time as well. He went to Tottenham to be assistant manager. Uh, so there's a lot of changes, a lot of new managers at Leeds. Like uh, it was difficult to really figure out how we were going to play. Speaking yeah. of change, would you say that the goalkeeping position has changed a lot in the last ten years or so? Would you say that that's something that's that's really changed? Or, or yeah, what? yeah, yeah, yeah. That is because now as a keeper, you almost have to be as good as a as an outfielder with your feet. You have mm. to be two footed, uh, and on top of that. You have to be able to use your hands. Yeah. So the, the role of a goalkeeper has has evolved massively. Mm. Do you think you I, can I do it now? <laughs> yeah, that's what uh, I was going to be my question. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. N- no, I probably... Right. Um, uh, well, I could if, if I was fit and... and, uh, and <laughs> what, like Wasn't I'm playing 40, Call of Duty. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm 41 now. Put on a a couple of kilos, you know, my knee is a little bit sore and dodgy. Uh, I, I wouldn't fancy it, you know, like, but to be fair, the other day in training, Ben, uh, I went in goal and Ben, he, he, the other goalie coach, Ben Roberts, he was just uh, hitting a few volleys at me and, uh, and I thought, oh, this feels quite nice. You know, like, yeah. it was like being back in, I thought, oh yeah, I, I really, <laughs> it brought it all back and I thought, oh, I would like to play again a little bit, but. Mm. Probably I couldn't do it now, not not in my age, and I wouldn't want to do it. To be honest with you, that's something that the, yeah. me and uh, Maz and Ben were all discussing, wasn't it, about Ben Roberts? Like, can we have like a bit of insight on him? Because apparently he's just been like unbelievable. And you, I think you said in your own thing that he was one of the best 
goalkeeper trainers you've ever worked with, wasn't it? Yeah, that's, yeah, Ben. He's 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 top top draw. You do like he's by far the best goalkeeping coach I've had. Wow. Uh, and I worked with him probably how long did I have Ben for before I retired? Maybe four years, three four years, something like that. Um. So Ben, he's worked with the. Uh, if you go through the keepers that he's brought through when he was at child and then when he was at Yeovil and that the keepers that he's worked with, a lot of them are playing in the Premier League or, or playing abroad. Uh, Pope, uh, who's, uh, who's at the, in Burnley now, Ben, he, he took him uh, from non-league. And uh, so so Ben's worked with a lot of the keepers that are now playing in the Premier League. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, no. So he's 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 done he's done really well. Hmm. Yeah, no, it, it's 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 crazy to sort of get an in, insight because we yeah as fans we don't always get to see you know the the, the goalkeeping coaches exactly. we only see for example you know Graham Potter um, and, and that's yeah. again quite limited uh, to what we see so it's, it's really good to get get your insight on that and um, just uh, sort of on on that subject uh, then of got you know goalkeepers and stuff um, of course recently I don't know if you well I'm sure you've seen uh, but like for example uh, Jordan Pickford's been under a lot of pressure etc uh, you know a lot of goalkeepers getting called out for their mistakes and stuff yeah. so are you, are you happy uh, that you weren't around during social media um, you know during your career or, or do you sort of do, do you well, like to be, that yeah, so Social media came out. That, 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 don't forget, I, I retired in 2017, didn't I? Mm. Uh, oh, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, so yeah. social media yeah. came out. And, and I must admit, if I was playing today, I would definitely not be in social media mm. because yeah. I don't think it could handle it. I, I wouldn't mm. be able to handle all the, like say you made a mistake, or and all the grief you're going to get mm. from people mm. hammering you. Like, I just, I, it wouldn't be for me. Yeah, it, it, is that easier said than done though? Just because of now, now especially you know, growing up and you know, just like if you look at let's say the players, of, let's say ranging from seventeen upwards to even twenty seven, twenty eight, they've obviously grown up in the social media world. Um, do you think it's like it's a hard thing to sort of stay away from or not be involved in at all? Yeah, that, that's 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 true. You're absolutely right. But um, then there's obviously other ways you can do it. You can have a private account and, and just have yeah. family, friends and, and so on. So you don't have to deal with the, but I can see why some, it's great when people as well going, oh, you were great today or you played well yeah, or true. some of the younger kids mm. who's at Chelsea, Arsenal, Man United, they got the, let's say 200,000 followers and, and there's something yeah. flattering in that, mm. uh, you know, posting. It's like an ego thing, of, isn't it? A yeah. little bit. It boosts yeah. your ego, you yeah. know, when you put on car and, You've all your clothes and all this and that, mm. but like my my advice would be, you know, stay stay far away from it uh, because <laughs> it could come back and and, and hurt you a lot. It's true. Yeah, well, there have been a lot of um, Brighton fans <clears throat> very vocal about the goalkeeping situation at Brighton at the moment, um, especially after Robert Sanchez was given his well his Premier League debut, wasn't he against Spurs? So we've got Christian Walton that's come back from a number of loan spells, and like I said, yep. Sanchez has had his start against Tottenham, done very well. Matty Ryan lost his place now. He's got his place back. So what's the competition like at Brighton? There's a lot of decent it, keepers there, isn't there? No, we we got four excellent senior keepers. Don't forget we got, uh, like, as you said, Rob, oh, Rob Sanchez. Yeah, Steele as well. Yeah, Steele, Jason, yeah. Jason Steele. But um, Rob Sanchez has, has been at the club since uh, he was 16. He's a big, big, talented boy. He's got a bright future ahead of him. Matt has done incredibly well. Not missed a game for three and a half years. Um, the only time he's missed games is when he's been away with Australia. Uh, Steely has has improved massively uh, in the in the time that he's been here, uh, and is is excellent for the group. He's you could see when he played in the in the cup games, he's done really really well as well. Uh, and then you got Christian Walden, who's been out on, on loan for yeah, he's been out on loan for what is it almost four years, three four years now in a row, yeah. and played uh, Seems well like over a hundred. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it does. Is. I remember signing on... him from Plymouth, and then he's just been here, there, and everywhere. For the past. Yeah, I remember yeah. when Christian first came on trial, uh, or when we signed him, he he came and trained with us. So he was only a, a young kid at the time. That yeah. was up in the, at the university ground. But no, Chris has done really well with the loan spells. Um, uh, what is Christian now? He's just turned twenty five, I believe. Uh, Rob 23 and you got Matt who's a little bit older and Steely's, Steely's the oldest at, at 30 um, but we got four 
more than capable uh, keepers that, that can all play. Go ask the question, haven't we? Who do you think should be in that starting position? Like, what, <laughs> and, and plus, on that, to be honest, what was the decision behind the Sanchez, Sanchez decision? Because obviously all of us are expecting, you know, either a Matty Ryan starting, and if not, probably still, because of how well he's done. I mean, yeah, no, it was. Uh, that's obviously the manager's choice, and mm. and um, he wanted to to give give Rob the chance against uh, Tottenham, and thought he was he was, he could help the team out in in that game, and and he did he did very well. Mm. Uh, Matt's back in the make it, uh, sorry, Matt's back in the team, <laughs> and and that's um, that's because he's the, he's the best keeper we got at at the moment, and um, don't forget Matt is incredible, consistent, and's been. Mm-hmm. Been doing it for season. What is it? As I said, three and a half years that he's yeah. not not missed yeah. a game for the club. Very rarely makes mistakes. Uh, very calm, composed. Uh, he's uh, and he's he's Australian captain, so Matt's a very very good keeper, and he's the best one uh, at the minute. Uh, and j- 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 just just on that, um, so you mentioned obviously Graham Potter. You know, he, he's the guy who makes that final decision. How much? impact or how much does your uh, opinion you know for example mm. do you go do you go to um to Graham potter one week and be like look i think you know um you know he's he's been doing really really well in training wherever it might be you know give him a chance or like how much impact do you have no that's that's not for me obviously if he comes and asks for my opinion i'll give him my opinion but that would be between the coaching staff uh and and then i mean ben uh so my job is to assist ben i'm ben's assistant on the pitch uh yeah. So that that will be for them to decide. Uh, I, I won't go in and, and try and uh, if he asks for my opinion, I'll give him my opinion. Besides that, I, I, yeah. that's not that's not for me. You don't go into the changing room and be like, oh, I want this guy starting today. No, no, no. <laughs> I got absolutely nothing to say about that. No, do, do you enough. enjoy being yeah. a coach then, Casper? Is it have you enjoyed that? Obviously, you've played like all over the place and you've been in goal for a number of years now, different clubs. Is that like something you always wanted to do? Be a coach. Yeah, it was uh, at the back end of my career when I ended up being third choice. Um, I uh, I thought, yeah, no, this is the route I want to go down. I want to go into coaching. I start doing my coaching badges. Um, and so I already prepared a little bit before I, I finished. And, and luckily, and I'm really grateful that the club offered me the, the role they offered me. Nice. So, yeah, it's and, uh... always something. Yeah, yeah. And, and on that as well, um, it's fair to say throughout your career, you've, you know, you've been in every pretty much sort of goalkeeping position. So, you know, first first choice, second choice, um, third choice, etc. You, you know, been in um, all those different positions. Yeah. Um, do you think that gives you um, much more sort of knowledge and like be able to pass that on to goalkeepers? Do you think that's, that's had an impact? Um, I think it gives me uh, a chance of of understanding what they're going through emotionally uh, mm. and and to so I can put myself in their place in a way uh, yeah. which which probably helps sometimes so I, I know what they are going through like if they are if they're upset or, or angry or disappointed uh, I think that's important mm-hmm. sometimes uh, it, one thing is when you haven't experienced something you can say yeah maybe I, I understand how you feel but I don't think you understand it until you tried something yourself mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, so definitely. that so that's 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 important uh, to be able to uh, to be able to feel what they what they what they're feeling at the at the, the time. It's no, a definitely tough, tough reality, isn't it, of a goalkeeper? Like, do you have to sort of prepare yourself to know that if you're a number two and the number one is almost guaranteed to start every week unless he gets injured or makes a few mistakes in a row? Is that yeah. something that you sort of prepare yourself as, like as a goalie? I'm not saying you've always been a number two, but is that what you have to prepare yourself when you when you do get to that time? Uh, second choice keeper is, is is quite tough in 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 many ways yeah. because uh, you know you you're not going to play. You're sitting on the bench, but then again, you have to be ready in case the keeper gets injured, mm. which is yeah. very rarely and. Um, it's it's a weird role. I never, I didn't. I really, honestly, a lot of people say I don't understand, uh, don't, I don't enjoy sitting on the bench. But I, I, I hated it because uh, I felt more nervous sitting on the bench. It's the unknown. I was yeah. never relaxed on the bench because um, you can't impact the game, right? Like you, can't you, can't do anything. You're helpless. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I sometimes ended up sitting there screaming on the bench, and you know, <laughs> I, I warmed up quite a lot just just to do something. And yeah, I was mm. quite. I was, 
quite nervous when sitting on the bench. I, I, I hated it. That's hated crazy. It. Yeah, it's crazy that you're more nervous on the bench than you were <laughs> starting, which is yeah. Which is, which is so a third choice keeper is, is different. Then that's when you can start focusing on different things. I started going to the gym a lot more. Uh, yeah. I started doing, as I said, my coaching badges, and I started go and watch the the academy train i started speaking to the academy goalkeeping coaches and um i, I quite after i got my head around it i really enjoyed being a third choice keeper uh mm -hmm. first of all you don't have to travel all the time which is nice because you could spend a bit of time with the family but also there's there's different things that you can start focusing on uh, besides being ready for training obviously but yeah I, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed being the the third choice keeper for for that period um as, but not to begin with. I, I, I thought about quitting football because I couldn't really? couldn't deal couldn't deal oh, with wow. it. Yeah, that's crazy. How, well, how long ago was that? So that was about the time when Chris uh, Chris Uden came in, and oh, wow. you know, um, who did we have uh, before Chris? We had uh, Sammy Hubia. Sammy Hubia. Yeah. Uh, that he gave Christian Walden his his debut, which uh, was understandable. Chris was a good prospect, and uh, he played. Remember, David Stockdale got injured, and then yeah, he played against Wigan. the Tottenham. Against Wigan, wasn't it? Or the Tottenham? Yeah. No, right. yeah, Tottenham was his first game in the was in it? the cup. All right, yeah. Um, and that was after the time. Then that's when I thought, okay, when I ended up being third choice, I thought, you know what, this this is not for me. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. I spoke to Andy Beasley, who we had as a goalkeeping coach down here in Brighton, but ended up going with Gus to to Sunderland. I went up to see him, and he said, Casper, the only advice I can give you is that if you quit football now, that you done." Then you're not coming mm. back in. Mm. I thought, no, he's he's got a point, and yeah, that's point. kind of got my head around it, and yeah, enjoyed it uh, after that. And, and and mentally, how long did it take you to get your? Because you you meant you mentioned a couple of times there. Uh, you know, it took you a while to get your head around it. How, how is it like an? Is it is it just like a? I don't know, like a a year process, or is it just is it everlasting? You know, is it? Um, do you always I, think about like? It was a mixture of things because at the minute, at the time, I had problems with my with my elbow, so I didn't train well. I had pain in my elbow every day. I was training; there was something not right, mm. uh, so I didn't perform well in training. I felt I felt slightly embarrassed in training because uh, I thought I was terrible. Uh, the whole thing, you know, in your head, you got all these little demons talking to you, yeah. saying, "Oh, you're old. You can't do this. You can't do that." <laughs> um, yeah. So that. It took me a while, but as soon as I get my head around being third choice, uh, I sorted out the elbow, the issue. I just had to get it strapped up every day in training, and um, and I start training and it's training better and better. And and I knew that uh, that Chris Huden he liked me uh, because my, my contract was coming to an end as well. So I started thinking about that. Thought about oh, what am I going to do after yeah. this year? Um, I kind of found out that Chris wanted to keep me. And uh, that helped a lot, just settled me down a little bit, in a way. Yeah, nice. Oh, good. And um, nice, so, good. it's fair to say you're a pretty competitive guy. I can't remember if it was off air you were telling us about playing Call of Duty until 2 or 3 a.m. But also, <laughs> on the pitch, of course, you're pretty competitive, as you should be as a professional footballer. Um, there's a couple of stories that I heard. And one, is it right that you once <laughs> refused to let an eight-year-old score a penalty against you at a young seagull's training day? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's amazing. <laughs> No, I, it's not. It's not entirely true. Like, <laughs> you say entirely. It's a shame it isn't. It's a shame it isn't. No, the thing is, obviously, I saved the penalty, but I just dived one way and he hit it that way. So, I, oh, it wasn't on purpose as such. Like, I, I feel a bit bad about it now, but it was just uh, we had an open training and we always do this. Uh, this like penalties with uh, somebody that's been drawn out to do penalties. So. And yeah, I felt a bit bad. Yeah, saved the eight-year-old's well, penalty. Yeah, well, one was, one was on purpose, wasn't it? <clears throat> a charity match when you saved three penalties. And how old was one of the kids that was taking <laughs> that penalty? No, yeah, he was a 14-year-old boy as well, yeah. <laughs> but then again, that was, a, that was a proper game. 11 v 11. And uh, yeah, yeah, he's not it. scoring. Yeah. Yeah. Did someone <laughs> tell scoring. you to let it in at all? Did anyone give you a come on, Casper? Let no, this one in. no. Save two already. The, the guy afterwards, he said, that's terrible from you. Not <laughs> 14 years old. Oh, that's, yeah, brilliant. Uh, that's incredible. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it definitely shows your competitive side. Um, but no, that, that's incredible. I, 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 I rate that a lot, uh, Casper. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, got a, I got a lot of time I was, for that. I was the eight-year-old, by the way, Casper. So <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> he would have been brilliant no, if that was you. Ben, that'd make us feel bad. No, it yeah, that would have been good. No. And then talk, talking of talking of funny stories. Now there is another couple that we want to sort of get some verification on from you because, of course, yeah. we've got to don't, verify. Don't believe you. everything you hear. I have no, to say that. exactly, 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 exactly. So we have to verify it with yourself. Um, so there was apparently a story. Uh, again, this is via Twitter, um, so you can't, you know, we Incredibly all know. Accurate, be, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, it can, it can be definitely not be true. So apparently, so there was a thread basically to give you a bit of insight. So there was a thread someone made. It was like, "What was your weirdest encounter you ever had um, with a player?" And so there's two threads. There's one for Leeds and there's one for Brighton. Now, the first one is Leeds. And apparently um, you once ran, <laughs> nearly ran someone over in town, but you did wave <laughs> and shout sorry after you did it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I is can't remember true? that. I can't see that. Yeah. Like, no, um, <laughs> fake no. news, that one. No, I'm, I'll, yeah, well, No. I can't remember. No. I once met you in Churchill Square. I was really weird. I was I don't know where I was coming out of. It was on the ground floor. And you and Peter Brezavan were both in the little one of the mini booths just in the middle of the uh, of town, just get, like sorting out a sky deal. I just remember seeing you two there and I was really young just looking up at you like, oh my god, it's Peter Brezavan and Casper Anker again. Yeah, you know, yeah, we probably we probably try to to see if we would get a good offer or something. Yeah. I've always had Sky, <laughs> so I don't know. I just tried it on. So. This isn't oh, an ad, though. Yeah. No. That's, that's actually I, something that someone sent in on the uh, on Talk Seagulls when they put the questions out, and someone come in and said, "I'm not. This isn't a question, but I remember following him around Churchill Square car park just for a photo. Apparently, he followed you the whole way around the car park, but didn't want to actually <laughs> ask you for the picture. <laughs> so so he never got a photo. I don't know if he actually got it in the end. He didn't say, but he just said he was so nervous. He was following you around and, and then you nearly hit him with a car <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's him yeah no actually it's funny you're saying it i remember being a, a young boy and uh this is obviously back in denmark and and i saw a guy called you wouldn't know him his name is frank pingel right and he used to play for brenby so the club that i later played on he was i was supporting brenby as a kid and uh, we me and me, me and my cousin we saw him in in this supermarket and we just walked behind him all the way around the supermarket <laughs> <laughs> and I said what uh, and we just stuck the paper out and he signed it so uh, I, I, I know what he's going through this kid if yeah, he was yeah. just following me around I did that a few a times bit, to be fair a bit, I think I did it with it's a bit, it's a bit creepy Let, let's not let's not lie it's a bit it's, creepy well, I mean, it's it, creepy <laughs> but it's, it's yeah no, you just it's you don't know what to do it's, when you're a young no, when you're young and you're following a player yeah. around I remember with uh, Liam Brinker yeah. I ran into him in uh, I think it was Builder Bear back in like 2011 <laughs> I was what like 10 and I just ran into him and I was just like do I speak to it? I, you know, in the yeah, end, I got no, a photo. It's, it's nah, awkward. Of course. I know exactly what you what you're going through there. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure you've had so many awkward sort of experiences and stuff. What, what, what's what's been the most like most awkward experience you've ever had with a fan or anything like it's you know? Uh, that, yeah, any any kind of interaction you've had with a fan that's been just been a bit bonkers. <laughs> no, not really. Not at the. Not that I can really think of. Like I'm, I think I'm quite approachable. Like if I can see, I kind of know, uh, like from experience, if if I can see somebody's a little bit awkward, that like I used to yeah. just go, "Oh, do you want an autograph?" Just, just Break to get him. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So mostly, uh, I think it's it's been all right. Like I haven't had any any weird stalkers really, <laughs> okay. well, that I know of. Uh, yeah. they've just been hiding there's, really someone, well, Casper. there's someone behind you looking through the window Casper. <laughs> yeah, it's true man. just have a little look no I think it's always been quite alright I've, I've, I've never seen myself as any anything special if you know what I mean like I'm a, just a normal guy like anybody else um, nice. so no very it's, humble, it's always yeah, sorry very humble. very humble oh yeah but that's what I always thought like wow well, Food, one thing is we just got a special job and, and that's it there's nothing more to it true yeah yeah no definitely go on go on go on no, I was going to change the subject so I'll let, I'll let you finish what you were going to say oh okay okay cool just the final, final thing on the story so this is the last one I want to get verified now, now apparently this happened in Bright once you were at Brighton um, apparently um, <laughs> sorry I've got to compose myself for this one uh, so <laughs> Casper uh, Ankrigan uh, warned me in McDonald's on London Road, Brighton, that there was someone shooting up in the toilet oh, while, he true. Ordered, yeah, yeah. while he ordered. Oh, is this true? This is true. Yeah. This, this is incredible. No, I was right, angry. Ta- right. What, what? Yeah. Talk us through it. What, what happened then? No, I took uh, took my daughter and her friend. Uh, they were they were f- quite young at the time. Uh, we went to McDonald's. Anyway, I, I think I went in to order some food and. Um, 
and they went upstairs in the t- toilet and and they came running down and said oh there's there's something going on there's something weird mm. i think that was the one. anyway i went up checked the toilet and this guy just fixing up in the toilet that's wow. crazy this and wasn't I went, London I w- Road, McDonald's, was it? Because you get yeah, some was, yeah. on the road. Oh, yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. explains it. I, yeah, I went London downstairs. Road, yeah. uh, I said, listen, I said to one of the, the people that worked there, I said, you need to go and sort that out. That's not good enough. Mm. Like you're having, mm. uh, what do you call them, junkies in, in the toilet yeah. f- mm. fixing. Like, can't yeah, have that yeah. with kids around. Yeah. No, no all, like, all joking. All joking aside, obviously, yeah, it is, it's not a good. It's not a good look. Uh, yeah, no, that's mad. But um, just the fact that the story is true itself. No, the story pretty, is yeah. true. Yeah, my, yeah, my, yeah mind boggling. Well, that, that, well, there you go. I, so, well, I knew. So, I, obviously, uh, I, I hope I didn't offend the the guy or your friend or whoever. That oh no, no, this. Story. Is, no, this is just this is just on. Um, so, like I said, that on Twitter, people do like a thread where um, they ask you what's the strangest or oh, the strangest okay, place okay, or situation okay. that you've met someone, and obviously your yeah. name came up in this thread. A few um, times. So, so yeah, if you, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a couple of times. Would've. Yeah. So no, yeah, uh, we just had to verify that. But there you no, go. Absolutely there you go. true. Absolutely true. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Amazing. All right. Cool. <laughs> there you go. Right, Ryan. The floor is yours. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, like, going back on a bit more of a serious note, like you mentioned, you like wanted to be a coach when you turn to third choice is that have you ever wanted to sort of pursue it further and become a manager or is that probably a little bit out of your reach no or is it not no not for me no, no got no, absolutely no interest in it to be no. honest with you um <laughs> it's a no from me so too much stress or... yeah no it's just like I'm, i must admit graham potter I, i've learned incredibly it, it's amazing what i've learned just from the year and a half that he's been in, really? in charge now, just about the, it's probably knowledge that I already had from, from playing myself and playing in Goss's team. And, but, but to see the way he works and the, the way he, his tactics and uh, the whole understanding of, of how we want to create chance and want to build from the back uh, are now more than ever sit and look at football games and uh, I look at the two sixes, how we can get the sixes on the ball or however we want to try and, 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 and go through uh, the, the opposition team. Um, so I've learned a lot from him. It's been, uh, it's been a, an eye opener for me and it's been uh, incredible. Would you say uh, he's but, a bit of like a, something different at the club, maybe something you haven't really seen before or? Yeah, no, hundred percent. Yeah, the closest I would uh, I would say is is probably Gus the way he wanted yeah. to play, but it, it wasn't. Yeah. As, we didn't go into depth as much as, uh, and like maybe he, uh, Graham, he's got more like uh, like I remember with Gus, for example, the the first year, like we we never really watched too much of the opposition. We just watched the goals they scored. That was that was basically it, and then there was the way that we played. But we go into depth, like we see, we watch training back at times, there's clips he will pull out, why we're we doing this in training to transfer that into the game, to a position that we're playing wow. against. Um, it's very in-depth and and uh, it's very clear what he, he wants the players to do. It's really interesting, That's isn't wrong. it? We haven't really heard much yeah. about Potter yeah. behind the scenes and what he sort of goes into. So it's quite interesting to, yeah. to hear that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Oh, he's, uh, that... um, he's, oh, cool. a, he's a very good manager. Yeah. It's interesting. So, so, so out of, out of all, I know this is going to be a bit of a, a bit of a sticky one to answer. Uh, but oh, out no. of all the, <laughs> out of all the manage, out of all the managers that you've been under, so you know, even even outside of Brighton, um, or or worked alongside of, who's the best manager you you, you would say, or you, your top three even? Well, it's it's not it's not that difficult uh, because I think <laughs> okay. if, if every manager's got the, their own strength, uh, and mm. I got full respect for for managers the way they want to play. We all got our different philosophies. Uh, I had a Michael Laudrup uh, in oh, in wow. Brentby, who uh, who was obviously very position based, as I said to you. I wanted to build from the back as well, and and he was he was good. Really enjoyed him and and. They had John Jensen. Anybody, do you remember anybody remember John Jensen? Maybe before your time, John he was at Jensen. Arsenal. I feel like I recognise uh, that name, but I don't know where from. Yeah, he scored for Denmark in when Denmark won the Euros in '92. Oh, right. um, so they were the manager, the manager and sister manager at the time, and and that that was the first uh, first time I really experienced uh, how. But it was not it was not as tactical as that. But he obviously threw when he was at Barcelona and, and Ajax and yeah, uh, it was, the it was the difference ve- of levels in the game. Yeah. He, he yeah. was a legend of the game. 
yeah. and obviously how how to to keep the ball and we were working a lot on that but then then again Dennis Wise had his own philosophy the way he wanted to play and and you got to respect that in in, mm. in a way mm. but uh, Graham Potter is, is definitely uh he's up there and probably the the best manager that that I've worked on oh, it's wow. difficult because now oh. I'm on the coaching coaching side compared to uh you'd be able to, to see from a, a yeah. higher view though probably wouldn't you be able to see sort of what he's trying to say whereas maybe some of the younger players wouldn't quite get what he's trying to say as much as you would with your experience maybe yeah that, that, that's a fair point um but again chris uden what a manager he was for the club yeah, and what he's done for the club yeah and yeah. it was slightly different the way he he played um mm. I remember when we first had uh, Chris and he said, no, he want, the, want us to play forward a lot more than where we were used to maybe playing around the back all the time and keeping the ball, where Chris, he wanted to break lines and and and, and get forward uh, the first pass that you always had to look forward. Uh, but it's, it's a completely different uh, style of play and, and you've got to that, respect that as well. That's interesting you say that, though, because a lot of Brighton fans actually – Look at Chris Hewton and um, like some some of his periods of, of time at the club as a bit of a negative manager, like how he yeah, maybe you know sometimes in the Championship he was very attacking. Wasn't oh no! It? Like in, yeah, the, in the Premier League, it definitely. was very defensive. But in the in the Championship, like yeah. he's probably one of the best one of the best managers Championships no, we've ever seen. No, and, and do you, do you, do you think Casper? Then do you think in that case, obviously that step up for you know that because he yeah, I mean Chris Hewton, like you said, he'd done an incredible job, and we're oh, not yeah. taking anything away from him at all. But do you think that when he when we made that step up to the Premier League, was it just was it just a case of surviving, you know, making sure we were in that Premier League and then kicking on from there? It, it probably was a little bit, and and mm. but Chris, he wanted to to be solid at the back, and and yeah, that was that was the first thing we we had to make sure that we were hard to beat. And again, it's a it's a slightly different philosophy. So, so the first thing that he would work on was maybe shape from the from the back four. Whereas it's slightly different now. It's more like how can we uh, how can we work how can we work the ball through through the opposition that we're playing against, and and how can we score? Mm. Um, but but it's 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 such a big difference going from the championship mm. to the Premier yeah. League. The course, quality yeah. opposition is 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 frightening. What the, when you look at the teams that you're playing with the quality they they have going forward, and I think Chris was a, a little bit worried about about that. So he thought, no, first of all, we need to make sure that we're solid at the back, and then uh, then we'll see what what's, what's going to happen. Mm. We'll always get a chance or two. Glenn was obviously a big threat yeah. for us, and and has done fa- fantastic for us mm. in the Before- in the two spells. Before Chris Hewton, we obviously had Sammy Hippier. And we had Craig Mikel Smith on the pod last week. We asked yeah. him about Sammy Hippier. And Craig said that Sammy was ahead of his time. So maybe if he had maybe if he had started being a manager now and he had the right players, his style of play would have worked in the championship and it would have potentially been successful. Do you agree? Do you think that he was ahead of his time? Um, no, to to a degree, yeah. I, I, I do agree with him. Um I I think uh I struggle to understand the system that we that he wanted to play at the time. He said it was and similar that, to what Liverpool issue, were trying yeah. to do now. That's what he he said it was getting the fullbacks up and using them as as much as they yeah. can. No, that's that's true. But um, I personally, un- I, I struggle a little bit to understand the way he wanted us to play. Maybe that was my understanding of of, of football that wasn't good enough, or or his way of explaining it or passing it on to the players, but. I can see what he wanted to do, and I've thought about it a lot afterwards uh, because mm. I like Sammy Hubie a lot. He was—I thought he was a—he was a nice man, a, a really good guy, uh, mm. and I was I was gutted for him that it that it didn't work out. Uh, to be honest with you, but um, for one way or, or another, it just it just didn't work. Yeah. It's probably yeah, that it's... sense of people maybe being a bit lost with it, not quite understanding what it was, and yeah, maybe linking to what yeah. Craig said, like. Maybe a bit ahead of his time. I mean, we'll never know, will we? But but, but I think I think you make a good point, Ryan. It's it's like I think that got translated to the fans as well. So as fans, Casper, yeah. we, we were a bit confused as to what he was trying to do. So if the players are if the players are confused, then you know what chances have the fans got? Um, yeah, but and then then we have to we have to say as well. It takes time to mm. implement, yeah, of course, your yeah. philosophy and the way you wanted to play. Mm. Um, and so was it with, with with Graham. It took a little while for for the players. Yeah. Don't forget, we we come from Chris Uden that was a bit more direct and and a bit more focused on being solid at the back. To suddenly now, wanting to be uh, 
being charged on the pitch. Yeah. 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 And it takes no, time. Very, very, very fair point. And yeah, I, I, again, sort of uh, as fans, well, we, we're very, we want success straight away, and we want to win. We want to, you know, yeah. play amazing football. And these things obviously do take time. Uh, it's a bit of a lost memory, memory really, like isn't it? That that era, isn't it? To be honest, that season's a bit of a, a distant memory now. It's just gone. It's happened. It's gone. It's so quick. Yeah, it's mad. Which which season are you on about there, Ryan? Uh, with Sammy, it's just like. I mean, brushed under the Casper, carpet, I think is the expression. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah. maybe Casper, that's something I could ask you to be fair. Like, was that season something that you had to get used to as a player? Obviously, we had a, quite a lot of success from when you signed. And then we had that dip of finishing, what, 21st yeah. or wherever we finished. And then we oh, went we straight were, back up to yeah. third and then second again. So Yeah, we were close to getting relegated that year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, Chris not the day of the season, I think it was. I think that's when we, it was Millwall lost and then... On the Tuesday, yeah. and then yeah. it was the last game of the season, we were okay. I think. Yeah, oh, it was a horrible year. That uh, yeah. really didn't like. Uh, yeah, didn't didn't enjoy that at all. Um, and that was the year as well where where I was. I went to third choice. I, I really didn't like that year at all. No, I got mm-hmm. nothing good to say about that. Besides, Chris came in and and steadied the ship. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. a good Chris. choppy table on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you, Chris Hewton. If you actually, there's one thing yeah. I can yes. say, Casper. I think that 2015 year, you followed Talk Seagulls, I believe, and I, I think I think you were one Did of I, my yeah? fir- I think you were one of my first ever followers, and I only had like 200 at the time, and you were one of my first ever followers. It might have even been before oh, nice. that, but I think oh, it was that happier yeah. year. So that was actually. Yeah, although a good, for you, a good year for you, Ryan. One, one good yeah. thing to take out of that year. Yeah, I think Casper followed me on Instagram, <laughs> so I'll take it. Oh, good. Um, amazing. Um, so, Casper, um, we, we, we do a feature, uh, we, and we'll try and sort of keep it as brief as we can for you because we know we, we're sort of keeping you <laughs> a bit longer than anticipated. But we, we run a feature weekly uh, where we basically get you to create the perfect Brighton player. Now, it can be either players you've played with or players you, you, you know, um, current players, literally any any. Any era, any sort of time, past or present, it's down to you. Um, so we've got categories. So we'll, we'll give you a category and you've got to give us a player that you think best fits that category. So, for example, speed. And then you give us, a, you know, the name of who you think is the fastest player you've, you know, you've, you've been with. So, um, yeah. Are you ready? Uh, ready for this one? Yeah, this could take a while. <laughs> I might need a bit of help we'll, we'll, just to we'll, remind we'll me about yeah, the players. We'll, yeah, no worries, no worries. Okay, so the first category is um, the best finisher. The best finisher, okay. So we so, need so just to think about strikers. Help. Yeah, so, so just to give you a bit of help. So the last two answers we've had, we've had Bobby Zamora yeah. and we've had Leonardo Ujoa. So that's just, the, you know, the kind of uh, the prowess we're talking about at the moment. Yeah, but when you're saying finishers, this is me, sorry. Yeah. No, go on, go on. Finish from where? Because they, 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 can they score a goal? <laughs> what are we talking from? Like shot accuracy. Outside the box, is it inside the box? Is it uh, one so touch yeah, finishes? Shot, so basically, yeah, the, the, basically shot accuracy. So like, who who who's the most deadly finisher? Look, when you when they got the ball, like the striker, and that you know you knew they were going to put it in the back of the net, basically. Oh, it's it's, thick, it's difficult that because there's so <laughs> many things that I got in my head now. Like I got a Glenn Murray, who's incredible yeah. from six to let's say six to ten yards. He's yep. deadly. He will, on his first touch, he could just he will score every time. He was by far yep. the best the best finisher in there. But then again, if you move back, you wouldn't have Glenn outside the box because uh, yep. that wouldn't work. Uh, then you got a Kasenka Lua Lua who could absolutely smash the ball, but that mm. could end up in row set or <laughs> yeah. uh, in the trees, in the trees at the with Dean at your house. In the back door. Ex- ex- exactly. So <laughs> it, it's a really tricky one. Uh, no, that's fair. It's uh, the most, but, I'll be honest, Casper. It's the most analytical answer we've had, which is yeah. which is very refreshing. I, I love to see it. Um, um, it's very sort of you've gone into the depths of finishing and everything like that. Then you got uh, David Lopez, who was uh, very good at free oh, wow. kicks. Oh, yeah. could yeah, place yeah. the ball. Uh, yeah. Then you got the other Spanish boy, uh, Vicente. Vicente? Yeah. Vicente. Yeah, Vicente. Um, yeah. See, this is this is a big problem for me. Too many... <laughs> to be fair to Glenn, though, he scored a decent, he scored a decent volley from fairly far out against Palace, didn't he? Remember Palace away a couple of seasons ago? I actually think he scored that against scored outside the well. box against Villa as well. I believe. Yeah, honest. that was a good strike. Yeah, I remember so, that score, yeah. that goal. Um, right. Should, should, should we lock in? Should we lock in Murray then? Should we just yeah, go with him? Let's put Glenn. Yeah, yeah. Let's give it to Glenn. Right, I was going to say give Glenn. It to, we'll yeah. Let's give it to. Let's give it to Glenn. Right. I think this one. I mean, we, we might take this category out because we've had the same answer <laughs> for the past two weeks. Now it's speed. 
Um, now, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. We're thinking of a current player, yeah. It could no, be. I, I've got a few. Oh, go on. Got, oh, love, okay. love that. You got go Kasinga. Yeah. 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 Uh, you got the. Oh, I just lost his name now. Will 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 Buckley? Uh, Buckley. Will Buckley. Yeah, yeah. Incredibly yeah. fast, but uh, that's the problem sometimes when with the fast players, the hamstrings go all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. You got a Wayne Bridge who was quick. Yeah. Wayne Bridge. That's yeah. an interesting shout. He was. He was quick as well. What a player he was. Yeah. Another yeah. ex Chelsea um, lad. Which, which one to think of? Yeah. Um. <laughs> what what what's the answer you've had? Lancy. Well, we've had yeah, three Lancy. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot him. But, <laughs> yeah, he is rapid. How did you forget Casper? How can yeah, you forget? No, I was just thinking about week, Casper. I know. <laughs> no, you can't. He's too of... quick. He runs past yeah, Casper yeah, so fast. You never see him. <laughs> um, let let me give. Uh, let me put. the uh, I'll probably put Kasinga down. Just really? Because yes. we got a new one. Yeah, just yeah. because. Uh, That's good. Because, yeah, just because good I shout. played with him. Yeah, fair play. Yeah. Okay, so so next one. Uh I won't tell you who's been picked until you give us yours. Uh so oh, we've got football link football link IQ. So yeah. Football link IQ. Yeah. I think castle has got to be up there now after listening to him for the last yeah. <laughs> 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 you can say it yourself. <laughs> yes, no, so, but yeah. like uh, have you sent the like you're talking about yeah. vision as well and about yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's put yeah, let's put let's put vision. That was actually a different category, but we'll, let's put it all in one. Um vision, yeah, vision, sort of football IQ, how they read the game, that uh, kind of thing. I can I could almost put a Gordon Gray in there as well, because the way he could oh, read really? the game and how good he was on the ball. Uh incredible footballer not very quick he wouldn't get the speed uh, he wouldn't win that one but a very good football brain Um, but a donkey as well he's got a great brain as well yeah Uh, Vicente Uh, Mm. any uh, what's what's been mentioned so yeah Vicente was one um, and also we had in the first week it was Bruno yeah Bruno's intelligent very intelligent as well this, this, yeah. It's difficult, this one, boys. It's really difficult. <laughs> what, what, on, Cass, uh, what, what are you going to lock in? What are you going to lock in? There's some great names mentioned, to be honest. Uh, uh, oh, could it be like a, <laughs> a Liam? I, lo- I, lo- a, a I love six. this. Suspense is killing what, me. Liam Brickcut? <laughs> yeah, Liam Brickcut Rosinius. was... Oh, yeah, Brickcut was fantastic. Yeah, yeah Brickcut yeah. was a good, uh, good player, reading the game well. Uh, not yeah. very big, but... One every header. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick. Uh, I'll probably stick. Uh, uh, should I put Vic Vicente? Yeah, I'm gonna stick Vicente in there. Is he it? needs to go in there just because yeah, of uh, yeah. what's a nice. Player. All right, and the next category is leadership or heart. Oh, that's gonna be Gordon Greer. That's easy. Oh, there you go. Look at that straight away. And what, yeah. what, what was it about Gordon Greer? What what made him such a good um, leader? His accent. Not, yeah, that's right. No. <laughs> you know, he's Scottish aggressive. Um, <laughs> no, he was just a leader. You know, he would lead in everything he was doing on the pitch, in the dressing room. Um, uh, would not, uh, not scared of, of saying what he meant, uh, telling people off, would drag people with him. He didn't, <laughs> just didn't uh, take anything uh, in training. He demanded the highest from everybody around him and, and from himself as well. So he, he, he was a good captain. I had a lot of arguments with him over the time. But, um, <laughs> but, but no. Never came to blows though, no? No, no, just, nothing like that. Or words. <laughs> no, just words. Nice, nice, nice. Um, all right, and, and um, just to let you, if you if you want to know, uh, the, who's been mentioned before, we've had Adam Alabd, um and also yeah. uh, Brian Horton, who's a bit of, back in the day, um, and Bruno as well was mentioned as, as leaders. Yeah, I can um, see that. I can see that. Yeah. Um, so the next one and the final one is work rate. Work rate. Uh, yeah. So that could be in training, on the pitch. It could be any, any kind of like, yeah. yeah. Who's got an engine well, on them? No, yeah. work rate should almost be expected, shouldn't it? Like it's Here just, we go, yeah. Uh, who, 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 sorry? No, I'm no, saying work to... rate is for me, is something oh. that you... That should should just be there. It's it's oh right, it's you know, hundred percent. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. cost anything. We, we, that was actually another answer. Someone else, uh, I think it was, it was Andy Naylor said. Andy Naylor said. Andy Naylor said, Naylor said, that, Naylor said yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. He said, yeah. He said the exact um, same thing. He said it should be a given, really. Yeah. No, uh, it could be uh, a Wayne Bridge just from no oh, nice like bombing up and down on the side. Mm. He was, he was, he was mm. incredible. What a player. Yeah. Um, 
we we didn't mean uh, we didn't mention Matt Hobson. He could have actually been a mm. bit of a leader as well uh, at the time. Oh yeah, yeah. good yeah, player, nice. good guy. Uh, mm. Work rates. Craig Michael least... Smith. What about him? Yeah, true. Yeah, no, he always yeah. ran. He never stopped. <laughs> never uh, stopped. That, yeah. that that's a fair point. Wasn't there a story of when you I think you played Peterborough and you just kept the ball and he had to chase after you constantly? Oh yeah, I felt sorry for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were down to ten men as well, and we were I think we were three 0 up at the time, but he just kept chasing. Oh, I was there. Ball. Yeah. Oh, were you there? Yeah. Yeah. It was game. incredible. What day, day. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. McLean um, so got sh- sent we... off. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah that... That's his ex partner, isn't it? Yeah, strike yeah. partner. Mad, mad, mad. No, is that yeah, put... <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, he's, he's strike yeah. partner. So I had to clarify. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, um, <laughs> put put Wayne Bridge in there just from Wayne bombing Bridge. up and down that uh, that left hand side. So like he was in training. Like yeah, he was like in it. training right. as well. Was he amazing? Yeah, class. All right, brilliant. Well, okay, amazing. Some re- re- really new ones. So just just to summarize then. So um, as a finisher, you'd have Glenn Murray um, with the speed of Kazenga Loa Loa. Um, with the footballing IQ of Vicente, um, the leadership of Gordon Greer, um, and the work rate of Wayne Bridge. Now I that's, quite like, that's a, I quite like yeah, that. That would be some player. A, <laughs> that'd be, that'd be, we say it every week, Casper, but that would be yeah. that's um, a Blondor winner. Great, great <laughs> yeah. uh, I would sign him an accent sure. on the bloke as well. If he's got Kazenga's accent, Vicente's accent, and Greer's accent, <laughs> <laughs> to one. <laughs> I'm not sure that would be understandable. To be <laughs> yeah, amazing. Um, so, and just quickly, we just uh, want to talk to you with just a couple of sort of current affairs and sort of looking forward to the Aston Villa game, of course, uh, yep. with, with you, Casper, if you don't mind. Um, so, of course, yeah, we, we have got Aston Villa coming up on the on the weekend, uh, three o'clock kickoff. Um, and, of course, the big, big news is Dunkey being back. How, how big of a miss has he been, do you think, in the past three games? Uh, Dunkey's our captain and, uh, and obviously... Uh... He's a great player. Uh, mm. Come, oh, well, he come through through the academy system. I played yeah. with him for many years. You could see quite early on that uh, that that he's a proper player. Uh, he's grown a lot, I think. Um, yeah, he's improved a lot in many ways as well. Mm. Um, and yeah, we we definitely need him in the side uh, just for yeah. size, for his range of passing, um, his intelligence, and. He's a good, good, good player, and uh, and for me, uh, a good, good captain for the club. And no, uh, yeah, look, a... go on. Oh. I was going to say, is it too much of a stretch to say we would have picked up maybe four more points in the games that he was out? So I'm thinking West Brom maybe we would have held him to the lead, and also Spurs maybe he would have been marking Gareth Bale when Gareth Bale uh, scored the header. Is that too well, much? To, is that I don't too think anyone was, mar- anyone was marking Gareth Bale. <laughs> yeah, I think they thought <laughs> no, that was, but, but they forgot he wasn't playing. <laughs> Yeah, we don't we don't know, do we? Um, I think uh, we got a good squad, and and everybody in in the squad we got uh, is capable of playing. But uh, obviously, with Donkey's qualities, uh, for me, he's he's an important player to us. No, definitely. Um, and um, obviously, as well, um, with regards to sort of positionally as well. I know maybe you can't give away too much. I know you've already, you know, with, uh, I, I doubt anyone from the Villa camp is listening, but just in case they were, I don't know how much, <laughs> how, how, how much you can give away. But um, how, do you see us setting up differently at all um, against Villa, like in terms of formations and stuff like that? That is completely down to the manager. And obviously I can't uh, yeah, go discuss too much, into it. Too much <laughs> about tactics and, and, and so on. Um, Dan, Dan Byrne will be playing in goal. That, that'll be his good position <laughs> that he's playing for. Right. That'll be in. <laughs> maybe, yeah. We never know. You yeah, wouldn't be surprised Potter doing something like that, would you? You, just, you never know. The guy just does whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, he's, not, he's, c- he's not scared oh. of making changes. That's no, sure. he yeah. certainly isn't. No, no, no. No, and, and, and that's we've actually praised him. Um, uh, well, I, I personally praised him. I think it was last week or the week before where, um, yeah, I, I rate him a lot for making these big decisions. Like, you know, when yeah. he dropped um, Ryan, he, um, you know, put, put certain people in different positions, you know, putting Ben White in DM. Like, he's not he's not afraid to do certain things, which I really respect. And I think a lot of managers, you know, you, you look at the, the successful managers, you look at Pep, you look at Jurgen Klopp, all these managers, they make these big, big decisions in big games. And that's yeah. what, you know, that's what makes them who they are i suppose so i've got no it's true he always um he looks for for opportunities rather than uh, the restriction and thinking oh do it do it do i really do this obviously he spends a lot of time there goes a lot of time and and thought into to what he's doing it's not something he just does off the cuff but Mm -hmm. um but no i respect him a lot for 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 
for doing things and 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 being bold enough to to take risk uh because it, eventually it's it's a risk sometimes when you when you make a big call and sometimes yeah. it's easier just to go oh no maybe i'll just go safe but yeah. no he's not like that he's not uh he's very brave yeah mm. I, I rate it a lot no that's class um yeah. And um, another thing we did want to mention as well, um, with regards just to fans and stuff, because as, as we can all appreciate, we're all in lockdown at the moment. Um, no fans are allowed to attend any games. But apparently, well, there's very, very sort of high hopes that fans are going to be uh, allowed to return to stadiums um, before Christmas, potentially, which is very soon, or the next yeah, couple of weeks. Men- yeah, <laughs> which is a bit, which is a bit mental. To be I honest. can't see uh, it I don't know how, how, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how plausible <laughs> it is, to be honest. Um, but Casper, how big of a difference has it been? You know, obviously you're there in the technical, you know, you're, you're there by, in the ground uh, during games and stuff. And how, how mental has that been for you? Like not having fans and how much of they, do you miss fans being there? Or do you, you, don't, you might not miss them at all. Uh, no, no, I do. It's, 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 it's it's crazy, isn't it? Like I remember the first game back after lockdown against Arsenal, mm. and you just couldn't believe it in a way. It was, mm. it was almost as it wasn't real. Like if we were playing a friendly, yeah. or when we know it's not a friendly, it was a massive, massive game for us. Yeah. Um, it's such a strange situation and, and feeling. And but then when you look at like Premier League highlights from 2018 or whatever, and you see crowds there, mm. you get the atmosphere and. You know, I think we all, when we're watching football on telly, have you all got the crowd noises on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I turn, no, yeah. I turn it off. I like listening to the players. Really? I like listening to the players shouting and listening to oh, them talking. Oh, no, I can't. I need the crowd noises yeah, on. Say, yeah, well, say, you're yeah. Used to, you're used to hearing players talking in training, but I think it's that's what I look forward to, being able to hear players talk to each other Shouting or shout at each or other. <laughs> we, yeah, we don't really hear that too much. No, yeah. no, fair. I can. I, I take your point, but... No, I, I just we we need the crowd, and I, yeah, I thought it definitely. was it was fantastic when we had the two and a half thousand against Chelsea in the friendly. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, brilliant! It was it was like it was a, a different game, and they, they were making so much noise. And you almost probably felt like that was a bigger game than the Arsenal one, and one was a pre-season friendly, almost a Premier League. <laughs> no, I know, and and but that's that's we. It's definitely been highlighted now how much yeah. we miss having crowds at, at games. Uh, do, you think, and it's probably, do you think the league? Sorry, do you think the league table has been affected by having no fans? Because obviously, the bigger teams are doing yeah. aren't doing as well. I heard someone say that the top players are suffering because they want to play with the pressure of having the fans, whereas smaller clubs are maybe a bit more relaxed, and that's why they're doing better against the bigger teams. Is that is that right? Yeah, no, yeah, I, I think there is something about it. Um, you got you got clubs uh, like a Sheffield United, who's uh, Whose fans they got an incredible fan base and and I think they that hurts them a little bit like a, a Newcastle as well maybe an Everton yeah. um, but again so also the big the big the big clubs you know it's it maybe it's not as as daunting or the pressure's not there when you suddenly go to Anfield or mm. or to yeah. to Man United or you have the players so, like Salah and De Bruyne as well, just the showmen, aren't they? At the end of the day, they want to perform on the biggest stages, so they probably. I mean, De Bruyne hasn't had the best of the season so far, and he's been one of the best players in the league for the last three years. So, yeah, but well, that's yeah, the answer. Say but... obviously Etihad, they don't get they don't really get many fans of the Etihad anyway. But <laughs> they're obviously they're obviously <laughs> suffering with, with not playing to their fans. You have got such top players like De Bruyne you mentioned. I think he he must be suffering not playing not playing in front of fans and performing at the highest level that he wants to do. I I'm a, I would find it very difficult. I, I never I didn't enjoy friendlies because it's like it's nothing at stake really, and mm. it's it's nice when you got fans out there. You got the pressure and and you got the noises, and so it's it's definitely there will be players that are suffering a lot from it, and I think there is clubs that are suffering from. Not, I'm not talking financially because all clubs are suffering massively, and it's it's been uh, it's been terrible with yeah. the with this uh, with this COVID. But hopefully now we can see an end to the whole thing. Uh, I'm hearing rumors. I don't know if they're true. That uh, this was my mate that said that the other day. Uh, he's a big Brighton fan as well, and he said, "Oh yeah, no, possibly you can get these tests done in the morning, and then you got like a certificate yeah. that you can go into to really? the ground with." I, I, I don't yeah, know I think, if it's think... it's true. 
I think it's like a five. Yeah, I, I believe it's like a five minute test. So it, it literally tells you a result within five minutes of you. Oh, taking I hope it. that's and, true. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's yeah, I think it's done done at football for like big events like football matches, concerts. That'd be great. Um, yeah. That sort of stuff as well. Yeah, but yeah, that that is the rumor I've heard as well, Casper. So your friend, yeah, your friend's sort of on the mark, I think. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how far we are with it. So I don't know if it's like going to be introduced next week or whatever. It might be a, you know a year away. We don't know. But yeah, no, that would be a definitely big thing yeah it would fans. be good but I, yeah. I definitely think we are we're coming towards the end now uh, yeah. with the with the whole vaccine coming out and fingers crossed and, yeah. yeah hopefully it's being there long. as well like you say players miss it we all miss it as well like we're just yeah you know, my saturdays are yeah, so weird course. now you just you just it's not fun you just think oh, God, i want to go to the game and don't get me wrong <laughs> i'm looking forward yeah. to the games but i'm just like i could be there right now and i'm not and it's just really quite Annoying, yeah, it's not the same as the it? pre-match no, beers with the boys, all. the Moretti. <laughs> the I love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the alcoholic that, in yeah. the group. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but obviously, love, yeah, love it's it's, it's something that people probably have taken for granted for yeah for for years, and and now so suddenly definitely. it's all been taken away, and it, it's um, mm. yeah, it's not very nice. No. No, definitely. And then, and then final thing before we let you go, Casper, uh, like, like we said, we, we've really appreciated your time. Um, just just again, going back to the Villa game, um, how do you see it? Uh, again, you know, I'm not asking for tactics or anything like that, but how do you see the game panning out? Obviously, Villa are on incredible form um, at, at the moment, with Jack Grealish especially, um, Watkins as well, you know, all these great players. They've got Ross Barkley. Um, yeah. how, how do you see the game panning out? And how, how do you see us maybe, you know, nullifying their threats? Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough game for us. There's there's no doubt about it with the qualities they got going forward, um, uh, and the money they have spent has been yeah. uh, incredible. Um, but I th- it would it would be really interesting to see us if we can go and, and dominate the ball and 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 hold on to the ball, see what they're gonna do then, uh, because I think we can do that. And um, yeah. then it's some. Just uh, whether we're going to take our chances because we will create chances. There's no doubt about it. Yes, the season so say. far. <laughs> but that, yeah, yeah t- t- that's that's funny. You should say that, Cas, because yeah, uh, we, we've we talked about it a lot on the podcast. I think pretty much every week we've done the podcast, we've talked yeah. about it. Um, we've we've um, you know we struggled with taking our chances this year. Is that something? Um, I know this sounds really bad now, but like, is that something you guys tra- like in, in training? Do you work extra on like finishing and stuff, or do, like how does it work? How does it work? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's, that, may, it's, that might come across really bad, but I, I didn't intend it to. Like we we work on on finishing uh, quite often, and quite often it will be me and Ben who will take the finishing session. Uh, okay. So we'll try. I thought you were going to say you, mean, you and Ben were scoring the goals. I was thinking, oh, like, no, no. Can, you, can you put your boots back on, please? Bring yeah. No, <laughs> no. So so within within training there will be. Uh, there will be shapes that the within training those so well, how do I want to explain it? it's like a tactical but again it would be running patterns it would be with a finish etc and then after the session's finished they will come over to me and, and Ben and either I'll take it up Ben Ben will take it depending on uh, what we're doing with the other keepers because we got four keepers at the minute um and we'll set them up in the positions that they play and there'll be a little interlink and a finish or there'll be a, a ball in for the striker to finish first time from six to eight yards. So we try to vary it and, and try to make it as realistic as possible. So it's just not yeah. like the, the, the good old one where you just have the ball, play it in, yeah. guy will set it and a dead ball from 18 yards where the, the, the striker can just place it in the, in the corner. So it needs to be realistic. It needs to be a good tempo and a nice flow to the session. Uh, so, yeah, we we obviously something we've been working a lot on, but this is not just something that's happened now, yeah. just because we're not no, the scoring goals. But that's something we always done. Um, I was going to so say, Graham trying... doesn't give you a little nudge and go, "Look, Casper, these boys, the confidence is a bit low in front of goal at the moment. Can you just let a few in in training, <laughs> get the confidence back up?" He hasn't said that to you. No, he? it it doesn't really work like that. No. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Uh, no. Imagine if it did. You wouldn't, oh. you wouldn't let him in anyway, Casper. You don't let an eight-year-old score yeah, against you. No, yeah. def- <laughs> definitely not. Competitive. That, that wouldn't happen. Not in my book. Yeah. No, no, no. Respect it. Amazing. Respect it. All right. Well, yeah. I, I think unless the, anyone else has got anything to talk about, yeah. I think I think we're we're, yeah, we're look all forward good. to another so, game, aren't we? That's, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fingers yeah. crossed. Prem's back. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's good, isn't it? Like it's it's weird when you got these international breaks and it's almost like uh, it's not the same. But there's not, not the no. the Premier League's not on. No, it's not. No, no, definitely. Yeah, international break. It's one of those. I, I don't know if you've seen. You know the the Pablo Escobar sort of memes where he's just sitting on the swing and just wait, wait, <laughs> patiently, <laughs> wait patiently for the for the games to come back. That's, that's yeah, literally me right now. Literally us. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no, <laughs> no uh, uh, on, honestly, Casper, uh, we really, really appreciate your time. You've been a great, great guest. Um, so thank you very much for coming on. Oh, um, thanks, me. Thank you for having me. No worries okay. at all. Uh, you know, and you, you're welcome back anytime, Casper. Yeah, uh, especially during lockdown. Uh, if you, Not if a you want to chat. <laughs> yeah, always. That's great. Amazing, amazing. That's great. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much. And of also, course, let, as let any of the other keepers know, or any of the, any of the other players, if they're interested in having a little chat, yeah. say we're all brilliant. <laughs> shameless plug <laughs> there, Ben, but we'll take it. <laughs> you, what about Ben? You can get Ben Robertson maybe one time. That'd be brilliant. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah. That'd be excellent. That'd be really that'd be good. I'll amazing. tell him to uh, to to start finding it, finding some proper headphones. Not yeah. <laughs> Amazing, um, uh, and of course, um, as per usual, please like, comment, and subscribe as well. If you're watching on YouTube, it does really, really help with the with the reach. Um, and of course, um, yeah, we'll see you next week for for another secret social.